It never was your gift. Welcome back, everybody. This is my part two. Some people will understand this video, while others may not. Some going to think I'm being mean on some of the things I'm about to say. But off top, as I give, once again, the most high, all the honor, the glory, and all praise and worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. See, I'm going to ask a question here. Have you identified your gift? The Bible say all good gifts come from above. A lot of people use, they, they, they leave the word good off. All good gifts. Now, when you break this down according to the Bible, you see talents. You see gifts. There is a difference. Like I explained in the video years ago. You can pick up a talent. Abilities. Talents, abilities, gifts. The difference between them. The reason why a lot of people are not successful because they trying to do something <laughs> that's not their gift. Uh oh. It happens this way. How many parents have in so many words and ways forced their children to be something they children didn't want to be. And how many arguments have that caused? Well, daddy, that is who you wanted me to be. Daddy, that was your dream, not mine. Mama, that was your dream. So why are you trying to live your life through me? Because you wasn't good or successful at whatever the situation was, why you didn't make it, why are you pressuring me to be something I wasn't designed to be? I'm going to let this sink in for a minute. When you identify your gift, when the Holy Spirit shows you what he has for you, mankind can't give you that. You know how many people getting degree on degree on top of degree, going to school, spending so much time in school, and it's not what they supposed to do. Once again, I'm not I'm not I'm not in this video to to sound like what's the word? I know it all. That's why I say it. I'm gonna ask you again, have you I'm gonna point dead in this camera, have you identified your gift? I ain't talking about what your what your grandparents and mama and that have you identified your gift? Have the Holy Spirit showed you what you supposed to be doing that? He blessed you with. This is why we got so many preachers in the world. Boy, you got that gift. No, no, nah, everybody ain't got that gift. Boy, you know you was called. No, nah, he wasn't called. He was told that by the family. You got people making themselves have a gift. You got people doing stuff that the most high did not bless them to do. And they wonder why it's not working. Well, I guess that this ain't what God had for me to do. In some cases, that is the truth. And then you can you cannot identify your gift and, and be so lost, and you'll start speaking bad on yourself because you're not understanding the level that you're on own that he's trying to take you to the next level. But you got to understand that level. That's pressure to put on somebody when you want them to be what you want them to be. There are a lot of successful people that didn't go to college. There are a lot of successful people that went to college and got a degree. I'm going to say this again. Your degree is what you pay for, but your calling is what you're called for. You don't need a degree when you're called, when you're chosen by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that is the degree for me. I'm not saying it to knock school, 
But you got to realize you got the worldly way of things versus the most high way of things. I'm operating exactly the way my heavenly father wanted me to. I never went, I never went to nobody's school. And I'm not saying that to knock people that went to school, that's going to school. But you got to realize there is a whole different way of teaching in the world versus the most high's way. Do you know how many people sitting up right now, they could be way more successful than where they are, but they have not recognized and identified what their true gift is. They operating in the worldly way. They being taught by the worldly way. Well, you, you got this degree. You might need to go on and get this here. And then look at how many people got more than one degree and they're very unhappy. They're never satisfied. Or let's look at how many people who are so wealthy, but they are never satisfied with their wealth, as the Bible teaches us, especially go back to Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. Read about people who got so much money and they love the love of money is on them so hard that they are never satisfied. Never. See, the biggest mistake a lot of these prosperity preachers make is they do not talk about spiritual gifts. Y'all remember that live chat we had the other day? We covered spiritual gifts. The world is going to always teach you material things, wealth. The house, the cars, the real estate. But what is shown to you? I'm going to say this again. It happens in the spiritual realm first. Before it hits the physical. The Holy Spirit will show you in the spiritual, excuse me, before the physical. You know what most people I know are doing backwards? They are trying to figure out in the physical something that has not been showed in the spiritual. Ouch! That's why the Bible say your gift will make room for you, but if you don't understand that scripture, you're going to live that scripture like this. I'm making room for my gift. How many people don't say that? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make room for my gift, man. If I, if I do this and do that, no, no, no. The gift makes room for you. Yo, the Bible say your gift makes room for you. But if you don't know your gift, if you haven't identified your gift, or you lost, you just out here, just flat out laboring on a job. The difference between job and work, ain't it? When you see me online in ministry, what you see me doing right here, this is work. I'm putting in work. I got a brother that love to put in work also with me. And he used that screen title. It's called putting in work with Steve E. Steve E knows the difference between work and a job. So you may have a job. I have a job, but my work is right here. This kingdom building. Well, JT, you ain't rich. I ain't a prosperity preacher. Well, JT, why you ain't got the real estate, the houses, the cars, and the land? I preach real prosperity. Ain't nothing wrong with, with having nice things, but don't let the nice things have you. I'm more concerned about your heart. I'm more concerned about the salvation. That's why I, I preach whether it's one or 100. I preach whether it's one or 1,000. It, it don't matter to me what the number is. The, the message, I pray that the message go to who it need to go to. When I talk about prosperity, I'm talking about you prospering in all the areas of the life of your life. But most of all, I need to see that heart prospering. Because what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Prosperity preachers, they already got their reward. Why they brag about the property, the real estate, the the the, the Bentleys, the Rolls Royce, the mansions, the jewelry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And last time I checked, you can't take none of that to heaven. So they better enjoy it while they can. I'm not against prosperity. I'm against false prosperity. Ain't nothing wrong with a woman or a man having nice things. But once again, when those nice things become your God, you cannot serve God and mammon, God and money. You can't serve two masters. That, that, that could be anything. Your job could be your master. The love of money, women, anything could be your master. 
He said, you're going to love one and hate the other. Why do you think most people have the love of money, but not the love of the father? They love the world, but they don't love the father. So when you recognize and identify what your gift is, you will be super blessed. And you're going to live totally against the world, the world system. See, even a lot of people in the world, they know how to be successful without paying tithes. Ouch. Uh-oh. Scratch my head on that. Why do you think, I'm going to let y'all answer that question. Why do you think so many people in this life, whether you're talking about going to church or don't go to church, how is it so many people are successful without paying tithes, without giving from the heart? What is it that they understand that the Christian mindset is not understanding? Uh-oh. Ooh-wee. How is it so many Christians are complaining about how broke they are? They always broke. And they pay tithes heavily every week. How is it so many preachers are teaching tithing but not stewardship? I didn't mean to go there, but yes, I did. It all ties in with this. The Bible talks about the, 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 the talents. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you buried yours in the ground? Mm. Or are you using it? Uh oh, better yet, are you using it? But who are you being used? Who Who's influencing you? Are you being used by the devil or the Holy Spirit? Or are you trying to be both? Mm. This is a wake up call. All good gifts come from above. It's only a few people going to understand why this video is, 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 is being said the way I'm saying it. Because some people are going to look at the title and get me, hold on, brother. I know what my gift is. Everybody don't know what their gift is. You may have an ability and trying to call your ability a gift. You may have picked up more and more talents, but you're you saying, this is my gift. The Holy Spirit will equip you, teach you, lead you, guide you. Show you how to operate in your gift. Some people are fascinated off others, so they look at others and they try to be like others. That may be that person's gift, but not yours. I want to be like, be careful with that. But I want to be, anybody you want to be like, be like Christ. Are you ready to understand what comes with that? I'm going to tell you something. To save your life, you're going to lose it. Many people are being what somebody else is. A lot of people still have not identified their gift. Some people are operating their gift, and some people don't know what their gift is still, and some people are using bad gifts. Got the gift of gagging. The gift of the, 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 the bad speaking, the, the, the tongue, chopping, the slickness, the conniving. You got a gift of knowing how to talk, but you use your slickness of your conversations to slick and connive people. That's why I used to hate going to car lots back in the day. I used to hate dealing with insurance people. I did. I had a bad, I had a bad problem with that because they slick. My old partner that he's passed, he's passed away, but my partner Uncle T would tell me, "Roll, it's two people in this world. I used to try my best to stay away from a pastor that's a real estate agent or a pastor that's offering the insurance. I used to say, ooh, that's deep. And I would say, Uncle, but why you say that? Because they both lie too much. They good at lying. They know what to say, how to say, and when to say it. And I thought about that. I said, boy, that was so deep. That's very deep. Because when you deal with agents, insurance agents, they don't want to lose your business. When you deal with pastors who are like that, they don't want to lose your business. That's why I talked about those pastors that love to brainwash single women into telling them you should never want to get married. And they go to Paul and quote certain scriptures in Paul. If it was up to you, I'll tell you to remain single as I am. A lot of pastors will use certain scriptures to keep women single. That way that money can keep coming to the house of the church building. 
I'm not talking about all pastors. Real pastors will teach you the truth on stewardship, giving from the heart. Or if you want to say tired, whatever. But not to jump off and all that. Y'all, you got to know what your gift is. You got to know who and what you are. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. I'm so glad I listened at the Holy Spirit and I didn't get caught up on being who and what like a lot of my family members was. I didn't let them brainwash me. Because if I was to listen to certain people in my life, I would have been a, I would have been a pastor in the building a long time ago doing what they wanted, the way they wanted, and brainwashing me and doing exactly what they're doing. I went against that. And to this day, I go against everything that's not shown to me by my father, my heavenly father. On that note, I love y'all. I can say a whole lot more, y'all, but when you once you identify your gift, once again, the Holy Spirit have already, already blessed you with the gift. Now, what man can what mankind can do is help play an impact on bringing your gift out. But the gift is already there. Man can't give you that. And that's why as I close, the piano is my gift. But the word is my calling. A lot of musicians don't understand that because they thought because I was posting all those tutorials, that's all I supposed to do and stayed right there. I continue to teach you how to play the piano, learn different songs, learn the music, teach me how to be this and teach me how to do. That's my gift. But when you put, whew, teach all the spirit, when you put your gift with your calling, once again, my gift was what I was made for. And the calling that came from the one who called me, the Holy Spirit, I put them together, I make a big dynamite. And it's going to be a huge explosion. Only operate of the Holy Spirit. That's why as I close, John 4 and 24, for Yah is spirit. And those of us that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Don't get your abilities mixed up with the gift. Don't get your talents mixed up with the gift. There, there, there is a difference. Don't think because somebody can sing, like I just said in the in the past video, don't get because they can sing that they're anointed. Anointed versus talented. Everybody that sing ain't anointed. Every musician that play and sing is not anointed. Every pastor in the pulpit is not anointed. They got the anointing flowing over them. Boy, what you see a lot of times is learned behavior and evil demonic spirits flowing over them. Be careful who you call anointed. Touch not my prophet. I mean my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Me and Brother Hall just spoke about this. Shout out to you, Brother Hall. Everybody's not anointed and everybody's not going to accept correction. And on that note, once again, if you don't know what your gift is, I'm praying for you. But the Holy Spirit will show you your gift. You got to get past what other people is, is, is saying in your life because you got a lot of you got a lot of fake prophets out here telling you, boy, you got the gift of prophecy. You you got that gift. That man ain't got no gift. Man be sitting there with that learned behavior. You got the gift of tongues. I I I, I leave with this. <laughs> Did the Holy Spirit do a bad job of, of of the gift of tongues? Because my my question is. Why why do you have speaking in tongues schools now? Why do you have different seminary schools when that was not a qualification in the Bible? If we needed education in that sense from seminary school, that would disqualify too many people in the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit will take imperfect people without degrees teach them, lead them, guide them use them 
I'm not knocking people that go to seminary school, but seminary, seminary school have done a bad, shown enough bad job on messing up a lot of preachers. But I made good grades. You was, you was, you was making straight A's, but you was flocking in the Holy Spirit. That's what happened when you put man's way over Yahweh. Some of the best pastors I know is the ones that didn't go to school. Some of the best musicians that I know is some of the ones that never went to school, went to, to college a day in their life. And I'm not saying it to say they better. I don't, I don't say this person is better than that person. We all are bringing something to the table, but all this competing and showing out and saying, well, because JT, you didn't go to school, you ain't got nothing on old boy, man, down there in Florida. He better than you because he got degrees, man. He got more degrees than a thermometer. You don't have no degree. Same with Pastor. Well, well brother, you didn't go to seminary school. You ain't got no degree. Who called you? That's man's way. They sat under his feet. They went down by the river. They sat up the sermon on the mount. They, they, they stood and sat up under him. And, and, and he chose certain ones. Paul had them, Paul had them accolades. But look at Paul when he was saw. Paul sat up on the Gamiel. However you pronounce that name. Gamiel. Gamiel, I'm gonna say Gamiel. Who's 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 supposed to be so powerful and, and knowing so much. But Paul had to unlearn what he learned. And go against what he was taught. And jump on the right team, on the right side. How many of us will go against what we was taught? I'll leave on that note. Shalom.